All right, so we're doing this right. We're really diving into a book about Cajun teenagers who helped win the Battle of New Orleans with Andrew Jackson and pirates. I got to hear this. You and I both. It's called The Battle of New Orleans, the story of three Cajun teenagers. And yeah, it's definitely historical fiction, but it actually uses some pretty interesting real details about that battle. You know, like how many unlikely heroes and crazy events actually happened. OK, full disclosure. I am already picturing teens wrestling gators and outsmarting British soldiers. Mm -hmm. But before we go full on fiction fun, set the scene for us a bit. What's the book trying to get across about this time period? OK, so picture it. 1814, Louisiana, deep in Bayou Lafourche, you can practically feel the anxiety in the air, right? Everyone in New Orleans is bracing for a British invasion. And this is where we meet our three main characters, Jacques, Marie, and Henri. I am already calling them the Bayou Bunch. I love it. Although something tells me they're not exactly your typical teenagers, even for back then. What makes them uniquely qualified to well, save the day, I guess. Oh, you hit it right on the head. Each of them has a distinct personality and skills that really make the plot. First, you've got Jacques. He's the fearless one, impulsive, definitely the leader type. Then there's Marie. Now she's the practical one, always thinking strategically. And she's got this knack for healing using Bayou Herbs. Okay, cool. I've got to ask, are we talking actual healing or more? folk medicine. Oh, it's definitely rooted in traditional knowledge, but she has a real talent for it. And rounding out our trio is Henri. He's the bookish one, a little bit scared of everything, to be honest. Okay, I'm already seeing the makings of a good team here. But how do they go from your average teenagers to whatever their destiny is? It's not like they just sign up for the army, do they? Not quite. This is where the story leans a little more into, well, fiction. They hear about the British coming and decide they can't just sit around, right? They know they need to train, but not in a normal way, of course. They find this reclusive swamp expert named Boudreau who really puts them through it. Think navigating dangerous waterways, surviving in the wilderness. Oh, and there's gator wrestling. Wait, hold on. For real? Gator wrestling? Yeah. This Boudreau guy sounds intense. Oh, he totally is. And this is where Jacques really forms a bond with one gator in particular, named Snapper, of course. And it's not just for show. Remember, you were interested in learning techniques. Think of this whole thing as an intense crash course in Bayou survival, but they're facing their fears head on the whole time. I mean, I'm all for efficiency, but I'm not sure I'd be so excited about the gator part. Still, yeah. in that environment, the war coming, I can see how that training would be invaluable. So they've got the hardcore mentor. They're learning tons. What's the next step in their little hero origin story? Well, they're training with Boudreaux. It's really just the beginning. Turns out he was trained by someone even more in tune with the bayou, a mysterious woman known only as La Sorcière de Marais, the Sorceress of the Swamp. Okay, now that's a name that I've met. Wait, are you telling me there's magic involved? What kind of final test does this swamp sorceress have for them? It's less magic and more like... The ultimate test of how much they've learned and how well they work together, she sends them deep into the bayou, completely alone, just them, their training, and whatever they can find. Three teenagers mm -hmm. alone in the bayou. Yeah. Yeah, this is where things get good. So how'd they do? What happens on this ultimate bayou boot camp? This is where Marie really shines. Remember how she's got that healing touch and those bayou herbs? Turns out she's also incredibly intuitive. She senses this massive storm coming, a storm that would have been the end of them if they hadn't been prepared. Whoa, hold up. She heals A.D. She's oh. predicting the weather. Okay, Marie's quickly becoming my favorite. She is the brains of this operation for sure. But surviving a bad storm is one thing. What about the whole facing the British Army thing. Yeah. That's, well, that's a whole other thing. It definitely is. And having passed La Sorcière's test, they realize they need to find someone who really knows the Gulf Coast like it's their own backyard. Someone with connections, yeah. resources. Mean, you're talking about Jean Lafitte, mm -hmm. the pirate. You can't tell me these teenagers try to recruit a pirate. You already know where I'm going with this. Of course, it's Jean Lafitte time. Mm -hmm. Okay, but seriously, the image of these teenagers trying to wrangle a pirate into helping them, it's just too good. So how'd they even do that? Did they just yeah. waltz right into his hideout and make their pitch? Well, it wasn't that easy. Meeting up with Jean Lafitte. Not exactly a walk in the park. But remember, they've trained hard, dealt with storms, gators. They don't come to Lafitte as scared kids. They're capable, and they know it. Right, so they're not just there asking for help. They want to prove themselves. Mm -hmm. I like it. But he was known for being ruthless, a total wild card. What makes them think they can win him over? That's what I like about this book. It really gets that whole us-against-them feeling that must have been everywhere in New Orleans back then. The British are coming. Everyone's on edge. 
It makes sense that even a pirate and a general might find some common ground. You've got a point. Nothing brings people together like a common enemy. Right. Okay. But Lafitte was as shrewd as he was, tough. I can't imagine he was won over by a little youthful enthusiasm. Oh, absolutely not. One thing that's really interesting in this story is how much Lafitte wants to prove he's a man of his word, you know. And these teens, they're the perfect opportunity to do just that. They actually call him out on it. They say they've heard he stands up for what's right, even if it means getting his hands dirty. Oh, wow. They really went there. <laughs> Bold move, appealing to his sense of honor like that. What'd he do? Was he impressed or ready to toss him to the gators? He's definitely intrigued, that's for sure. But... Lafitte, he needs more than words, you know? Remember all those skills they learned with Boudreaux? This is where it gets good. Okay, I think I see where you're going with this. It's not enough to just tell Lafitte they're the real deal. He needs to see it for himself. What do you do to make him run an obstacle course? Basically, Lafitte comes up with all these challenges, but they're things they'd actually need if they were fighting the British, you know? Sneaking through the bayou, breaking into a fake enemy camp, even using local animals, bugs, birds, to distract people. Like a special ops team, but for Louisiana, I love that the book focuses on those little details, those advantages you only get from actually knowing the land. Eh. Any of the tests stand out to you? Oh, for sure. There's this one part where they need to send Lafitte a message, but they use a specific pattern of fireflies to do it, something Marie learned from her grandma. Just goes to show you, sometimes the smallest things make all the difference. Wow, that's a great detail. Makes you wonder what other advantages those kids have that nobody even realizes. Okay, so they're skilled, Brave, clever, Lafitte has to trust them by now, right? He does, but Lafitte's trust. You gotta earn that. He's got one last job for them, and it's a big one. Infiltrate a British ship, steal their plans, and get out without getting caught. Whoa, talk about high stakes. This is where Snapper the Gator hmm. makes his triumphant return, right? You know it. This is where all that gator wrestling pays off, believe it or not. Jacques uses Snapper as a distraction. Total chaos on deck, everybody's running around, and while they're distracted, Murray and Henri sneak right on board. It's tense, it's funny, and it shows how each of their weird skills is actually super important. Okay, that's amazing. They got the intel, got away. They're basically heroes at this point, right? Yeah. So what's Lafitte do with these top secret battle plans? Things are about to get even more real. Lafitte, true to his word, he sets up a meeting, but it's not just with him. He gets the teens face-to-face -face with General Andrew Jackson. No way. From a swamp hermit to a pirate and now the future president, these kids are on a roll. So they just hand over the information. Or is there more to it than that? If there's one thing they've learned, it's to be prepared. They don't just hand over the information. They tell Jackson their whole story, the training, the close calls. And Jackson, who is a pretty smart military guy, he sees something special in them. It's not just about what they found, but who they are. Their initiative, you know, they earn that meeting. What happens next? Do they sail off to fight the British together? Not exactly. While Lafitte and his crew start causing trouble in the Gulf, you know, disrupting supplies, messing with the British, the teenagers, they end up with Jackson's troops getting ready for the battle on land. And trust me, their roles are about to get even bigger. Bayou survivalists to pirates to, you know, soldiers in the heart of it all. That is a crash course in 19th century warfare, if I've ever heard one. Okay, so last we left off, our Bayou Bunch had gone from training with gators to basically delivering top-secret intel right to General Jackson. What a glow-up, right? But I gotta know, what did they actually find? How does it play into Jackson's strategy for the battle? Turns out, the intel. It's gold. They found this weakness in the British lines, a spot where they're spread thin, vulnerable. And Jackson, he was a smart guy. He sees this as their chance. So those teenagers... Yeah. They hand deliver the key to victory. That's a lot of pressure for, well, anyone, let alone some kids who were up to their elbows in swamp mud a few weeks ago. What do they do once the battle actually starts? They're not just sitting on the sidelines, that's for sure. Jackson saw how brave they were, how resourceful. He gives them a job, a dangerous one. They have to sneak behind enemy lines at night and cause a distraction so Jackson's troops can attack that weak spot. The, the decoys. <laughs> wow, yeah. that takes guts. What I'm seeing here, though, is that it's not just about fighting. It's about knowing the land, using it to your advantage, just like we've been talking about. Exactly. It's something people forget about the real Battle of New Orleans. British were used to fighting out in the open. Bayou, totally different story. And this book, it nails that. It really makes you think about all those battles throughout history. Mm -hmm. How many times did somebody win because they knew the terrain, the secret paths, the shortcuts? It's like the land itself is part of the story. 
hundred percent. And you know what's interesting? In the book, while all this is happening, while they're behind enemy lines, that's when their bond is truly tested. You know, ambushes, difficult terrain, they see some rough stuff. It's not all sunshine and gator wrestling. Right, even with the fun parts, it's still about a battle. Yes. And battles, they're brutal. How do they deal with that? I mean, they're still so young. This is where you see how strong they are together, how much they've learned to trust each other. And sure, there's bravery, but there's also these little moments of humor. Even in the darkest parts, they keep each other going, you know? That's amazing, finding ways to laugh, even when things are that intense. Uh, okay, so they're behind enemy lines. Things are about to go down. How does their plan actually work? Let's just say, Snapper the Gator, he makes a comeback. Knew it. That gator was destined for glory. Mm -hmm. Give me the details. Imagine it. The middle of the night, sounds of fighting everywhere and out of nowhere. Jacques sets Snapper loose on these British soldiers. Chaos. Guys are running. Nobody knows what's going on. And while they're distracted, bam, Jackson's forces attack. That's incredible. They used every skill, every trick, every lucky break they got, and it worked. It's kind of poetic, actually. Yeah. But even when you win, there's always a cost. What about the teenagers? How do they handle that part of it? It's definitely bittersweet. The book doesn't shy away from that. They see the casualties on both sides and they realize war changes you. It leaves scars. They go home as heroes, but they're not the same kids who started this whole thing. They grew up fast in the worst way. So mm -hmm. more than a war story, it's a coming of age story. Mm -hmm. What does this all mean for our listeners then? What should they take away from the Battle of New Orleans, the story of three Cajun teenagers? For me, it's a reminder that history, it's not just dates and names in a textbook. It's about real people, some of them really young, who get caught up in crazy situations. It's about bravery, resilience, and sometimes it's about trusting your gut, even if it means a little gator wrestling along the way. Couldn't have said it better myself. It makes you wonder how many other stories are out there that we haven't heard. Stories that might change how we see the past, you know. That's the beauty of it, right? It makes you think, makes you want to learn more, dig a little deeper. The past might be gone, but it's still shaping who we are today.